when our friends at London Elementary want the state to trim the cosmetology and barber license requirements and I've been seeing this floating around a couple on a couple of threads and everything I wanted to see what everyone thought about it see if people had um, statements or thoughts about it because this is something that is very big as it is a very big topic because there's more than a thousand hours that people put into this along with sanitation requirements board requirements for you to meet these certain standards and be professional in the real world versus doing something that you do at home it's kind of like a uh, right to passage or more so a a right that you've um, gained by pushing through those nights pushing through those days and pushing through everything to defy odds and be able to cut hair and do your practice on everyone throughout your city or neighborhoods, towns, wherever you may be. But so what it says for the Georgia state representatives is three Georgia state representatives have introduced a bill into session that would extend into law and lessen the regulatory requirements of the beauty service, including blow drying, eyebrow threading, and makeup artistry. Specifically, this would allow Georgia residents to provide their services without state board, cosmetology, and barber license. The state re state representative David Jenkins, R. Grantville, the sponsor, said this week that the bill would be removed will help remove barriers to entrepreneurs without unnecessary bureaucracy in the way. With the cosmetology bill, we are basically exempting practices that are proven safe that people do in their homes. We allow people to do these very same things without a license if they work at a retail store or at a movie set. Clearly, he doesn't know any of the sanitation things that go along with doing hair or doing any type of these services because you could really jack somebody up. And this isn't a movie and this isn't a retail store. You're dealing with people's hygiene, you're dealing with people's blood, you're dealing with people's germs and bacteria. It's not about how well you can cut hair. It's about how you're able to follow the sanitation rules to make sure that you're safely cutting hair and providing a good service. This goes on and says, this will allow some of the work, so this will allow someone to work. The biggest barrier to this is tuition. Tuition, yes, I understand tuition is a big thing about this, but everything comes with a price. And yeah, things should be free. Things should be able to be done, but I'm not going to let a surgeon work on me because tuition is high. What I meant to say was, was I wouldn't let a surgeon work on me because tuition is high and he thinks that he knows what he's doing. I want someone that's going to pay that tuition to want to be 100% dedicated to learning it. So let's go back on, but um, the biggest barrier to this is tuition. But more importantly, there are more than a thousand hours of education to do, which is one of our biggest barriers to someone in the lower income spectrum trying to make ends meet. It is that much harder to take time out of your life to get a license like this. I can agree with that, but I can disagree with it too. Because in Ohio, I believe it's like a thousand eight or a thousand five. And I was in there every single day, rain, snow, sleet, hail to get those license. And for me to do that and then to look to someone to my left or my right or someone that would be portraying as a barber that hasn't been through the whole ordeal, it would be not only one of the most frustrating things that I got to pay that money back, but now that they're sitting there and they've done this charge free while I'm still paying on something that is now legally free if I was in Georgia but Ohio has not done this yet thank God um, it says according to the Arlington VA based Introduce of Justice 
20 states, including Texas, California, Alabama, and West Virginia, completely exempt threads from states licensing laws. Again, I can't, I can't say enough how much license mean here in Ohio because you don't. It would be like, for example, going somewhere to get something that is not certified. I would rather be licensed and certified and proven that I know sanitation to keep you safe, not be able to cut your hair because anyone can cut hair be able to keep you safe versus someone who doesn't know sanitation can cut your hair well, but leave you with all types of bacteria and all type of chemical, I'm not chemical, but uh, bacterial things that could be put in your hair from dirty razors or cross pathogens that may uh, go into someone else because you're using a dirty razor or not cleaning your clippers or leaving combs and stuff in solution that may not be cleaned for weeks because you're not going to learn some of these things outside the shop because if you're outside the shop or you're in a solo salon, it's you. Or you may get bad practices from other people in the salon and think that those are okay. But if you do go to school, you'll be able to see that none of these things are things you just things you should skip over. Because the things that you should skip over are most of the time the most important things that keep you in the game to do what you need to do. So I want to hear your thoughts on this. Tell me what you think. And after you're done with that, like, comment, reply, and tell me other details that you see about this. Because I completely disagree with this. And if this is the way that George is doing it, I hope it doesn't go up north. Because all it's going to do is cause havoc, chaos, and to saturate the industry with people who do not know how to do this job correctly and safely and claim that cutting hair is okay versus sanitation where it really really matters in this industry so let me know what you think